Hello, so uh, today we're diagnosing a B0036 code um, on a Chevy STM with the airbags. Um, very annoying intermittent issue uh, when off-roading and under high vibration. Uh, airbag light comes on and off randomly and just sometimes even without vibration. So in here we see that these discriminating sensors should be 1050 ohms. And if we look here on the wiring diagram, these sensors are daisy chained together and they pass through connector 109 here, which is your front end discriminating sensor input and ground. I've been going through hell because every time I test, seems it up, it's okay. The 1K, so the 1K resistor here is inside the right side discrimination sensor. Um, and we got the left one here and the left one is supposed to essentially just bypass this right side unless you know an impact occurs let's pull c109 up here pins a and b on this connector are your uh front end discrimination uh sensor and i'll show you those here in the, on the vehicle in a sec so here we are at the vehicle we see right now it is showing that these sensors are open and they're not working but as soon as i come near it everything starts going nuts the probes are fixed to j109 which is down there i'm not going to go into how to do that if you're taking on this challenge you probably should know how to do that yourself okay getting to the underside here we have our right side discrimination sensor here and this guy has been confirmed to be good i've hit it with a wrench i've kind of you don't want to hit it too hard because you know then you'll make the sensor not good uh but I've tested and it seems okay. Then we got our K&N oil filter. And then on the other side, the other discriminatory sensor. Um, this one is the one that's been giving me the problems and I will show you why. So here I have the meter. I'm not touching the probes. I am just going to touch the sensor and oh, would you look at that? I touched the sensor and now it's good. Wow and i can't get to go buy it again but there it goes it's not good anymore so i'll show you the easy way to fix that we're going to bypass the sensor now that the sensor is unplugged you see that we have uh, infinite ohms i've got these two little copper wires i made and um, we're going to bypass the sensor as shown okay to demonstrate this bypass here we're going to take our first wire and connect it between connectors D and C. And then take the second wire and go between B and A. What this will do is, since we know this one's good, since we measured it earlier and it said 1050 ohms, and wiggling this wiring harness causes the resistance to change, we know that the problem is either inside this sensor or the wiring harness. This will determine if it's a wiring harness because if we bypass it, the resistance shouldn't change. If the resistance still changes, that means it's in the wiring harness. If the resistance doesn't change, it means it's in the sensor. I will do that now. Okay, we now have the sensor bypassed. You can see it up here. This is our wiring harness. See how that's wired A to B, C to D. Pretty straightforward. You really can't screw this up. Um, and this will tell us if it's in the harness or the sensor. All we got to do is wiggle this. If it's in the sensor, that's going to cost money. If it's in the wiring harness, uh, that's no big deal. However, one good side benefit of this is if it is in this if it is in the sensor, you can pretty much use this as an airbag sensor because I'm pretty sure in an accident, this connection here wouldn't hold up. So we're going to probably, if it's not in the wiring harness, I'm just going to leave that here just like that so here we are to our meter i'm wiggling the doodad here as you can see it's not changing so we pretty much confirmed that the issue is in the airbag sensor and not in the wiring harness this is really good to know however it means you're going to need a new airbag sensor or you could just leave it like that since there is one functional airbag sensor and and if we move to the schematic view, we can see that these two are internally 
just wired together except for in the event of an accident where that's going to go and that's going to make contact um i can't guarantee that uh this will work as an airbag sensor but honestly what i would say is uh since we got the one on the one side it's probably good enough as long as you don't hit anything on the left side of the vehicle <laughs> but this is really not something you should ever consider using as a long-term fix or replacement honestly though uh you know with a vehicle that age the safety isn't really a big part of driving um airbags are nice but to get the light to go away this is good and this will also mean that uh now that the light's gone away, the airbags will actually work if this sensor were to detect an impact. Because, you know, before, where this sensor was making a faulty connection, the airbags wouldn't have actually worked if there was an impact. Now, at least if this sensor were act to this, if this sensor catches an accident, the airbags will probably deploy, which is good. This could also probably cause, if the wires come out, um, this could cause the airbags to deploy. I'm probably going to put some electrical tape over them. And that's probably going to be good enough. But uh, now you know.